In this lesson, I want to discuss the superior internal skull. And this is probably one of the more difficult things for A&P students to understand. And we'll begin ourselves in the front and work our way to the back. And then they will go back to the front with a little, with a very small bone. Well, we'll begin just uh, looking to re-reference ourselves that we can find the frontal bone outlined here. And we're going to exclude this part, so let me just color him out so we can see the things that are surrounded as being frontal bone. And there's really nothing in the frontal bone of consequence right now that we need to see. Uh, there are structures there, but you guys don't need to know them in the human anatomy and physiology level. The next one that's very prominent here we need to see is from back here downwards is the and it does go a little bit here, the sphenoid, the sphenoid bone. So the sphenoid bone is a quite a busy little bone, and I'm going to keep the purple around here so we can see this. And the first structure I want to see on sphenoid, which is kind of important to find, is our cella tersica. Cella tersica, also known as pituitary fossa, is where your pituitary gland sits. And if you kind of look at this, and we take the cell tersica and we move forward to it, you'll see these things that look like little handlebars. And I always kind of say, think of a fat man sitting on a motorcycle and he's grabbing those and he's sitting in his cell tersica and he's riding a little cell tersica motorcycle going vroom vroom cell tersica. Now, sitting in the front of that, since he's looking forward, we have these holes, the optic canals, the optic canals. So the optic canals coming up there, guys, that we can see. Now, I'm going to erase all that so we can continue looking down with that. I'm going to use green now. And we're going to come next to cella tersica, and I'm going to draw that in so you can see it there. And here it is again, and I won't color it in. This is foramen lacerum, and it's the hole on either side of the uh, cella tersica, foramen lacerum. Now if we continue on, I'm going to use orange here, and I'm going to circle these guys, and this is foramen o valley, foramen o valley. Raymond O'Valley, we can see him there. Now, if we go up north, we're going to find in red here and here the foramen rotundum. Now, I am going to um, erase some of this material here, and I'm going to show you guys something to kind of help you get yourselves oriented. And we'll take a look at some of this. It's kind of helpful. I'm just going to clear everything off. And I'm going to draw a triangle. Frame and last and rotundum to O'Valley. And it's a triangle there on either side that we can see. It makes a really easy way to break them down. Rotundum, O'Valley, Lacerum. Rotundum, O'Valley, Lacerum. Very easy way to break that guy down. And that is not everything on the sphenoid that we can possibly see. Uh, there are two major regions here of the sphenoid. This area here is called the lesser wings. And then in purple, I'm going to color in the greater wings. Here are your greater wings down here. Greater wings and in red, the lesser wings. Now the rest of the structures will be seen inferiorly on this guy, so we're going to turn our attention now to the temporal bone. The temporal bone is this, coming down. So all of this in red would enclose the temporal bone. Temporal. Now, when we come into temporal bone, a few things that we can really see, and this area here, I'm going to outline in purple, this is the petrous portion, the petrous temple bone. 
Now, in red, I'm going to write down Petrus real quick. Petrus. And then here we have the internal acoustic canal. Internal acoustic canal. Now, the only other thing that we can really see inside this model, and I'll use green, is to outline these holes here. And I'll color it in a little bit on this one. This is the jugular foramen. The jugular foramen. And that really concludes the things that can be seen on the temporal bone on the inside. And the next big bone I want to discuss, and I'm going to use red again, and I'm going to outline the occipital bone. Occipital bone. And so this would be occipital, occipital bone. Now, the occipital bone doesn't have a lot of structures that we can really see internally. The big hole here is the foramen magnum. Now, if we continue upwards, you're going to see this bump right here, the internal occipital protuberance. Internal occipital protuberance. And lastly, I'm going to use red to highlight these little holes here. These are the hypoglossal canals. Hypoglossal canals. Now, lastly, the small guy, I'm going to use green to outline him here. And this is the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid. The ethmoid bone. And I'm going to leave green and ethmoid, but we're going to have to look at some things here. So let me just erase this. And let me show you guys a couple things on it. This little bump in the middle here is called the Krista Galley. And then on either side, I want to use green on either side of Krista Galley to show you guys the cribiform plates. Cribiform plates. Now on here, they have, and I'm going to use purple to show, just write this in, they have the olfactory foramina. They possess the old factory foramina. Now, the other things that we would need to see on Ethmoid's perpendicular plate you would see in my eye orbit and nasal aperture video. But this concludes everything you really can see on this model inside the skull at the Human Anatomy and Physio Physiology 1 level. So this concludes my video on the internal skull. Thank you.